I'm in Castle Headingham today. It is about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. A bit of a late start again for me. And I'm doing a walk out of this book again. A seven mile walk, three hours uh, around Castle Headingham. The castle is just that way. I've parked the car down there, down Bailey Street. And I've been, I've done a walk around Castle Headingham before with Richard a few years ago. Um, it always seems the castle's never open. So, uh, yeah, um, it was shut again today, so I couldn't park in there. And, uh, yeah, uh, this walk takes in, it takes in Sybil Headingham as well. And, yeah, they're commemorating the Magna Carta here as well. 800 years, uh, 1215 to 2015, so that was last year quickly show you what walk it is in the book it's that's not focused the walk 22 castle heading on holes mill and, uh, i've got to be back to work for nine o'clock tonight so i've got a few hours so hopefully should get it done drive back in time castle shut so that sort of saved me bought me some time as well uh, yeah I've got a client at nine o'clock so things are going busy at the moment with the personal training I've got a new client starting uh, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. she lives nine doors away from me <laughs> so how lucky is that yeah my uh, car door signs were paying off and then I've got a couple more in the evening at the gym so yeah anyway um, I thought this was meant to be about walking about walking anyway <laughs> Um, so I've just got to find, um, this is the start of the walk here anyway, but I think it's that way, so I'm going to go and have a look, I'll speak to you in a bit. So yeah, you come out of Bailey Street and uh, you, uh, you walk out of the village, you go past New Park on your right, and the first footpath sign on the right goes up some little steps, you come up here, you come up out to this field. So, uh, so yeah, like I was saying, I've probably just about got enough time to do this walk today. Of course the castle shut, so that saves me a bit of time. Yeah, three hours, should be back in, in plenty of time. And uh, the weather, the weather's better than expected. It was meant to be sort of cloudy and about 21, 22 degrees Celsius uh, with a little bit of a breeze, but it's a very slight breeze, but it's glorious sunshine. So I definitely didn't forecast this. And uh, yeah, I was just sat at home, just being lazy and just thought, sod it, I'm gonna get out and, and do a walk. Um, on first impressions, this this route seems similar, if not identical, to uh, to the one that me and Richard did, because I can remember doing a lot of this, and we got lost over there, <laughs> and then over there somewhere. So yeah, um, so I'm just trying to recall it now, but yeah, it does seem very similar. Anyways, right, I'm just going to check the directions and get back to you. Production value again. Showing the hard work of the farmers of Essex. There you go. It's not a bad job, is it, really? Getting a plough of the fields and uh, on a nice day. Anyway, I think he's looking over. Why are you filming me at my day job? Good question. Right, so you cross over this earth bridge here. Oh. Bit zoom off. Okay, so you turn right down here. Then, once again, remember, I'm not giving you all the directions here. It'll make for a very boring video, and I'll be here all night. So, don't take this as the gospel. Get the book, look up the route online, do what you have to do. Okay, and then in 20 metres, turn left on a grass strip across a field. I'd say this is that. That looked like 20 metres to me. Carrying on along here. Okay. 
stay tuned. Okay, I'm now in Great Maplestead and you now head through that way to the church. The church replaced a pagan chapel on the site in about 1100 and boasts aisle and transept on both north and south sides, the former being deliberately added by the Victorians in the name of balance. Off the, tra off the south transept is the Dean, later Dine family chapel, 1626. The walk soon passes through what was the family estate. Okay, um, I don't know quite what the light's going to be like in here, but uh, I'm inside the church at Great Maplestead. It's actually open for, for once, the church is open in Essex. And I think this is what they were talking about, this is the, the Dine family chapel. See out there, some look pretty important. Yeah, it says, is that Johannes Dean? Yeah, so yeah, this has got to be the uh, Dinosaur Estate, Dinosaur Esquire, sorry. This is definitely, uh, it's got to be the Dean, Dean, Dine, Dine rather, family chapel. That's a nice little church. Nice wall paintings there. I don't think they look particularly old. Nice to be in here in the shade. It's quite warm out, so I've been quite lucky with the weather. There's the organ, the tower through there. There's the old uh, font. Looks like there's some pheasants ahead of me. They haven't spotted me yet. That weren't bad, finally I've managed to get some pheasants on film, they always run away. David Attenborough, nowhere. <laughs> Quality stuff. Just got in there. I'm in Dines Hall Park. Obviously once home of the Dine family of this area. I think Dines Hall is off to that way. And yeah, this is all the parkland itself. So this is where as I said earlier, they would uh, they would uh, hold sort of national standard eventing competitions. Uh, it's very nice. You can see so there's some trees that aren't native to this country. Or well, at least I don't look it not around this area anyway. Like yeah, really nice. I'm about halfway through the walk now, so I've got about an hour and a half to go, making good time. More to come. So you walk through the woodland, or rather to the to the left of it, keep it on the right hand side, 
and you come out to this derelict farmhouse called Wallace's and uh, I don't know, it's really cool. <laughs> um, I like old stuff. Um, there's something sort of sad about it and like creepy at the same time, you know. You got this, uh, just turn you around, you got this lovely view looking out across some like the, the rolling hills and the farm fields and that, some forests. And yeah, would have been a real nice place to have a farm overlooking that and so it's all overgrown. Get out of the sunlight here. The sun is proper acting up on this. I don't know if this camera's got anti glare fit to it, but I just cannot escape the sun. There, and look, that looks like that was probably the farmhouse. It's amazing how it's just left like this just to decay. Probably the best thing really, I think it's the nicest way really, just let nature take it back really. Farm through there. Yeah, it's really cool. Anyway, onwards. Okay, I've come out at Holes Mill just through here. That is the mill there. Um, I can't get too close to film it because there was the people that lived there were there and I'd gone the wrong way earlier and they'd um, apparently I was actually trespassing but they was fine but they just led me in the right direction so I'll quickly tell you about the mill here now I know it's not as good as actually being right in front of it but there's nothing you can do about that there was a mill on this site since at least the Doomsday Book records of 1086 the present building which dates from 1848 was bought by was bought by the Hovis company in 1917 and provided grain for its inf for its famous loaves, not infamous, um, then as now baked in Essex at Forest Gate until its closure in 1957. The cottages just over the fold were provided for mill workers. Anyway, like I say, I couldn't get the camera out there and then, right there. I don't think they'd have appreciated it much. As it was, I was sort of, I'd gone the wrong way and pissed them off already, so they kindly directed me this way so uh holes mill farm go on, hey? not a bad little garden eh there's the river Colne just over the the hedge here got a nice little decking area there and a barbecue and a boat yeah so I've got a hedge this way yeah I'd sort of trespass onto this land over here farming that they was they was fairly nice about it, you know, I apologised and that, that's the thing, like the directions were not particularly good there on that bit on this walk, so Peter Alma, rubbish, you didn't mention that you should stay on the left, on the, on the left hand side of the fence, you didn't mention that at all mate, so I carried on along that tra track and ended up in what I can only describe as like deliverance country, so yeah, not ideal, but Still, must be a fault there because it's a try your brake sign. Um, which leads me to the question of have they sent me the wrong way? Because I'm pretty sure it said you can either cross it by the fault or a footbridge. So, this obviously isn't the right way. Um, I may have to go back. If I do, I'll try and get a, a snap of the, the mill a bit closer. We'll see anyway. So I'm just going to shut this off for a second just so I can find me direction and I'll get back to you with an update. Okay, I was going the wrong way. Um, yeah, the fold is just through there. I've taken some photos, so it'll be at the end of the video. And then this white building, that's Holes Mill through there. And uh, yeah, you go across the, the pedestrian footbridge there. You can see the mill actually at the back there. It's really nice. You'll see it in the photos, as I say, I was in a bit of a rush because she, the woman that owned the house was standing outside, sort of, um, with this German shepherd that kept barking at me, and uh, I got the impression they didn't really want me to hang around there too long, so, go through this gate, it always gets me that with people, it's, it's a public right of way, 
yet they still uh, they still get funny about you you being there. Um, yeah, got a little tree house in there as well. Anyway, um, ran over with. <laughs> so yeah, you can see the River Colne is just along here. So I've just crossed over it over that fold. Really, really nice. I mean. Don't get me wrong, I envy them living there. That's a really nice house, you know, an old mill, sound of the water, and you live on the, right on the river itself. It's really nice. Can't beat that. Now, Alex, are they wild edibles? So yeah, this is Alderford Mill. It's in public hands in course of restoration. It's occasionally open to the public. Um, it says on the sign there, open second Sunday, April to October, 2 till 5 p.m. Well, I've missed that, of course. Uh, it's got working wheel and stones in it. Um, uh, it's similar to Holes Mill. It continued in use to the late 1950s. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if I can get any footage of the water here. If I cheaply squeeze around the side here, I can. Yeah, there's the river, and that looks like the mill there. There's like the, the gate and stuff where the water goes through. Okay, there's a baby deer. It's just gone through there. I've got photos of it, they're a bit blurry because I had to be so careful and so quick to get that. I don't know if it was a baby deer or if it was one of those small deer. I think they're called muntjac. Anyway, it's just gone through, it was literally just there, it was watching me for, must have been two or three minutes, so I was really trying to creep up on it. Um, I tell you what, some of the wildlife on this has been pretty damn good, this walk. Um, yeah, it's just gone through here, into the hedges here. I, I don't know if you saw it on camera, it's a little brown dot. I mean, literally, like, the camera, that was it zoomed in it makes it look like it was far away but it honestly wasn't far away um, it's because this camera is a piece of shit basically um, but you know make best of what what you got anyway um, yeah got a little bit lost up at Alderford Mill again and then I found the right right route again so yeah um, let's quickly read you the blurb of the walk Sometimes find that explains a lot of stuff to you. The way it's going, I might not be able to get any footage of the castle because it's closed again. Um, it always seems to be closed. So yeah, this walk links three contrasted sites of Norman heritage. The castle, the church at Great Maplestead and a successor of the Norman Mills of the River Colne by way of Dines Park and the Tranquil River itself. Castle Heading and Village, save for, saved for the end of the walk, is a gem, a cluster of colourful streets with buildings from the imposing on Queen Street, the main entrance to the village, to the, to the delightful church ponds. Okay, I think I'm going this way. I'm in this wood at the moment and apparently coming up soon there's going to be um, a sudden impressive view of the castle, Castle Headingham. Wildlife to speak of, as I say, I've seen that little deer, I think it's a munchak deer. I've seen rabbits, ducks, those pheasants. Um, what else have I seen? I know there's something else I've seen anyway. It's not been too bad and you know I've managed to sort of film or photograph a fair bit of it as well before it's had a chance to run away. Um, you have to be very stealthy with them. Anyway, so yeah, castle should be coming up coming up shortly. It's about 20 to 7. Um, I'm doing alright for time, it's gonna be tight, but it's about 50 minutes to get back home and then as I say I've got to shoot off to work to the gym to train someone. Um, 
but yeah, it's nice to get out really. And uh, say so the weather's been good. It'd be a waste really to be stuck indoors all day. Yeah, it's a nice little walk. This I'd uh, I'd recommend it definitely, especially if you like your history as well, like me. It's really good for that. I so say you just got to uh, make sure you know when the uh, <laughs> the castle's going to be open. The only problem, because it's 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 not in like the hands of English Heritage or anyone like that. It's in it's owned by descendants of the De Vere family, who uh, you know who built the castle. I'm going to read you a little bit when I get back there. Hopefully, if I get a shot of the castle, then. I'll, I'll film it there so you've got something to look at whilst you're listening to me ramble on about the history of it um, yeah it's, it, I say it's essentially it's in private hands so they can pick and choose when they want to open it etc um, etc et so yeah it's the only flaw with it really um, in that of course it's because I like English heritage and that I mean I used to be a member and everything out brilliant that I wouldn't mind actually being a member of English Heritage again. So you get like you get free entry to all their all their sites and stuff, it's brilliant. Loads of places you can go and now that I can drive as well, I should take myself off to places for the day, sightseeing and whatnot. Um the thing with English Heritage is they sort of tar all of their monuments and sites up and they almost make it all seem a bit robotic and bland and it's all the same sort of thing, you know, the gift shop, um, you know, fixed prices and all this sort of thing. You just see all those English heritage signs everywhere. Whereas when you get like a an ancient monument that's owned privately, you know, they put a different a different touch on it, a different approach to it and stuff and it's nicer, it gives you a different impression of the place and stuff. Especially as the fact, as I say, it's owned by descendants of the original family that built the castle. That's pretty cool. But, as I say, the drawback to that is that it's, it's often shut at some odd times when you think, why isn't this open? That's why. Ah, I can just see... There's the castle, just above my finger. Not the greatest view, I'm not going to lie. See if I can get a better view in a second. Okay, sorry guys, it's not the uh, the best view, but it's going to have to do, I think. So yeah, you can just see the top of the, the keep there. See, so, yeah, I'll just quickly read you this this bit while well, I try and keep the camera steady as well. The castle was built around 1140 for one of the most powerful Norman families, the De Veres, later the Earls of Oxford. It was a remarkable statement of power. The facing stonework alone, transported from Northamptonshire, cost a quarter of the annual budget of the royal household itself, and the 28 foot arch spanning the Great Hall exceeds any other Norman arch cathedrals included I've been in the castle as I say a couple of times went with the school once as well and it is massive the Norman arch in it is amazing the castle surrendered after sieges in 1216 and 1217 in retribution for the Earl being a signatory of Magna Carta but the family remained at the center of royal life for centuries more descendants of the De Vere still own the castle today the formal garden surrounding the Queen Anne House dates from 1715. Its 20th century neglect was reversed in 2009 as a project for the Channel 4 programme, The Landscape Man. The castle and grounds are open most days from April to October, but not Fridays and Saturdays. Check the website, headyoncastle.co.uk. Um, it's obviously not open Thursdays as well at times, so yeah, that's what I mean. You'd have to check the website anyway. But yeah, sun's just coming out over it. Lovely castle. Anyway, yeah, hope you found that interesting. Get back to you in a bit. Right, I'm back in Castle Hedium, not via way of the book. 
because uh, let's be honest, Peter Almy is has made another mistake again. It's the wheat sheaf. Um, he said turn left up there, but that wasn't right. You have to turn right. So yeah, this is a. Uh, this is the, uh, the village, probably the centre of it. So I've got the wheat sheaf there. There's a church through there. I'll go and have a quick look at that. Oh, and that's a restaurant, the old moot house. That looks old. It's been a good walk, this one. A lot of history. Lots of little old houses. I just wish maybe I could have taken a bit longer. Whoa, look how old this house is here. That's old looking. Okay. Take him out. And he's a church. That is a big church. Wow. Anyway, so uh yeah, this is the church, St. Nicholas of uh Castle Headingham. It's a nice little village this. These big trees here again. Yeah, really, really nice. Nice evening. Now, <laughs> it's highly unlikely that it's going to be open. But, I call it curiosity. Can't help myself. Doubt this will even be open. No, it's not. <laughs> the porch isn't even open. Oh well. Of course it won't be. It's like nearly seven o'clock. Anyway. So. I've probably got time to stop for a very quick half a pint. Um, in the pub. Because it just wouldn't. It wouldn't be a walk without that. Anyway. So. Uh, yeah. That looks like the war memorial there. Yeah it is. Yeah the poppies. Um, okay, King Street. I think he did say head down King Street. Let me have a quick look. Now we're on St James's Street. It's to turn left into King Street at the Wheat Sheaf, yep. Into Falcon Square, left into Church Pond, then continue along Crown Street to Bailey Street. I can see what he means. A lot of old houses. Anyway, I'll get back to you in a sec. Okay, castle's that way. Shops and the pubs are that way. I'm going to the pub. It's the end of the walk. Car's behind me. Thanks for watching. See you later.